Good morning. My name is Jess Beard and I am taking over for the divine and amazing Leonie Featherstone. She is um, the regular essential oil queen that comes in and actually does regular lives about um, the essential oil she works with, the doTERRA. And she's just such one of my most favorite people. And she's off doing some training. And while she's away, she's asked me to cover a series of um, uh, actual uh, sessions for her. So I'm trying to tie things in with um, being all about essential oils and uh, earth magic and um, the natural world and the natural kingdom. So I've invited with me today um, an amazing lady who I adore to come and we're just going to um, have fun together talking about the natural kingdom, plant medicine, connecting with the earth and not being afraid to create ceremony and to create rituals in our lives where we connect with the plant kingdom and the power of, of plant medicines. So Nicole is one of my friends. She is a goddess. She's an earth goddess and she has a series of um, products that she sells for pain management. They're really good for uh, people who have arthritis, uh, chronic pain. Uh, my mother is on some of her products and my mum is 72 with arthritis throughout of her body. And this is something really special uh, about Nicole's products, which, you know, it's not just the plant ingredients. I think the most special ingredient of all is actually Nicole herself and the love and the joy and being in that energy of what she's doing really does come out in her plants and in her medicine. So um, I have put a link to my group, um, Alchemist, uh, Archetypes and Alchemy, and um, I've put a link to Nicole's group in the bio section above this live. So if you want to join either one of our groups and connect further, you're more than welcome to um, stay in, in, in connection and, you know, keep chatting. So I'm just going to see if I can bring Nicole onto the screen and we'll see how everyone's doing. Now, in the last few days, um, probably for about the last seven to nine days, Facebook's been glitching a little bit. So at the present moment, I haven't got any comments, but I'm not going to be worried about that because... I'll then probably get a great big stream of them. Um, it's just a Facebook thing. So hopefully we have a really good connection and Facebook book can stop glitching soon. So let's see if I can get Nicole on. Perfect. Hello. Hi. Oh, perfect. You're nice and crystal clear and I can hear you very good. So thank you, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> how are you yeah I'm really well today it's beautiful and sunny here a little bit windy so I'm in the car oh wow and um I know that you've been traveling around a little bit but you're up in Queensland again aren't you yeah I'm in Queensland at the moment just uh north of Bundaberg in a nice little rural spot oh fantastic so when I um was asked by Leonie to do this I immediately thought of you because of your connection with plants and I just thought it'd be really nice to hear a little bit um, about how you connect not only with essential oils but like how did your journey start with um, I guess trusting plant um, medicine just as much or even more than traditional medicines you know what I mean like conservative medicine yeah um 
I prefer natural. I've always preferred natural therapies and and more natural products um, around my kids and in my house. And a few years ago, I uh, I had a, my own cleaning business, and I cleaned houses and uh, retreats. And I started using essential oils um, and just swapping them out from daily products in the home, really. And, um, yeah, the eco-cleaning took off and I took on a couple of um, resorts and I would use them. And then I became really interested in the energetic prop- properties of these oils that I was using. Of course, they were cleaning the surfaces and the areas that I was cleaning, but um, more, the, more the energetics and the vibration behind the plants. Um, and I, th- I thought it was it was pretty fitting, um, you know, people would come to these retreats to let go of whatever they wanted to let go of and to do their deep, you know, inner work. Um, and the essential oils never let me down. The, the rooms always felt really inviting and welcoming. And um, I guess from there it sort of spilled over into more of a self-care and incorporating them into daily um, personal self-care I think that's something that can become a little bit of a misconception when it comes to the power of them because um I had purchased some of those fairy dishwashing um tablets because they're on Mm -hmm. special and they're like 32 dollars something or other off to 18 and I always make sure to conserve water to pack my thing really really full and um and out comes these dishes and they stink like bleach and all these other different things. So um, I had this ancient bottle of um, earth um, detergent. So, you know, the, the earth um, company and they're all mm-hmm. natural based. So it was a powder and we ran out of the fairy ones. And I was just like, oh, I'll just give it a go. And it actually works just as good if not better and I don't have the bleach smell and all the different things and I'm just like why didn't I why didn't I and like see that bottle was left in the house from the Mm -hmm. previous one and I just brought it with me unknowingly so what had happened is that that bottle of natural powder has to be like three years old and it works just as good if not better than these fairy tablets and I'm just like oh my gosh I'm so aware of how um crazy the marketing um tabloids are and and everything else like that and I am still like I mean I I went to uni for writing and media and and we talked about in in journalism how you can control the narrative to like what you're wanting you know like for anyone out there when you're training to be a journalist, quite often you decide what kind of story and angle you want before you go and interview. And then you keep asking the questions that get you the narrative that you want. That's how manipulative it is, right? A good interviewer who doesn't have to um, sell a certain thing, you know what I mean? Um, can have the freedom like you and me to just ask questions and it just flows and the different things right so Mm -hmm. but you know if I am a journalist and I have an editor and that editor works for somebody else and then that person is at the mercy of businesses to get the ads funding and all those different things by the time it comes out into the media it's got so many motivations behind it that it's their story that they're wanting to tell. So I learned this. I went to uni to pay money for this. And it still happens to me where I can, you know, dismiss the power of natural products because I think, oh, well, that's not going to do as good as job. And um, so I liked how you started off with the cleaning products because if they do just as good as job as all these other stuff, then it's like, well, if they were wrong about that, what else are they wrong about, you, you know? So um, when, what was the first kind of thing that you experimented with when you started 
kind of using natural things, not just essential oils, but other natural things in um, your daily life. I've just noticed that Maria said hi. So hi, Maria. And hi, Maria. Um, <clears throat> so um, what was the next step after using the cleaning things and the, and the stuff like that and you started to believe in it more? Um, what was kind of the the thing where you just went, oh, my gosh, this is actually working for me better than conventional medicine? I had a uh, few personal health issues. I had some rashes and um, a few other yeah, health things going on. And I was buying um, and being prescribed a lot of creams and bits and pieces to try um, on this irritated skin. And I did notice that the prescription ones, a lot of times they would irritate it more. And I just wasn't having a lot of luck finding something that really worked for me. Um, so then I decided I would start, um, yeah, go right back to basics and start with just uh, a sorbeline cream. And then I could add essential oils into that and make my, essentially make my own creams. Um, and then I started making balms and, yeah, and then it sort of just went on and on and on from there. Well, the, the sorbeline, I would have never even thought of that, but that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And um, with the rashes, was there a certain essential oil that worked really good? Or did you no, I, well, I, I experimented with two or three. Um and then I started working on the energetics behind it. So that's the main reason I love and use essential oils so much is because it does work on that multi-layer. So then you can, you know, you, you're heading into the unseen world and the etherical world um, and you're able to work with the vibration and the energy behind and the emotions behind um, the underlying cause. Yeah. So for those who saw last week's stuff, you probably heard me say this, but just in case anyone new is watching or anyone new watches the replay, um, there's something that I like to explain um, and it ties in really well with what Nicole's saying about the energetics. So the mineral world is the crystal kingdom, you know, and um, that's the first dimension. So, oh, hi, Sonia. So you can't have anything evolve past this crystal. This amethyst cannot evolve into something more. This is the highest evolutionary aspect. It started out as a combination of elements and it took thousands and thousands of years to form. So that's why crystals are vibrationally able to heal because they are basically the ascended masters of the first dimension in the second dimension you have flowers which a lot of your essential oils are made from the flowers but not all of them some of them it can be like steeped from the leaves and the oils and stuff but there is a healing vibrationary aspect that you can tap into um, that you need to respect them for what they are you, you know the flowers of anything is like the pinnacle you can't evolve past a flower so that's why you can make a flower essences and that's why with intention you can create um, essential oils and you can create combinations and you can create healing balms and you can um, create your own essences if you learn to um, exactly what Nicole was saying is work with the energetics behind things, you can take um, a plain oil that's in a bottle and work with it on a whole different level because you're respecting this oil for more than just something that's been manufactured. This is connected to a plant. That plant has proven history. It has it should be respected and revered for medicine that it is. And you can connect a whole lot deeper um, by, by going in and actually like taking all these layers of our marketing off and different things and realizing that a lot of the pills that we take today, 
some pharmacy has spent, uh, some pharmaceutical company has spent millions of dollars, um, many years, taking something that's probably natural and trying to make a synthetic form of it because you can't patent a natural product. So hi, Fiona. So it's really fascinating to me that we've kind of become disassociated with the power of these herbs and the power of these plants. Um, so going back to the energetics, Nicole, of working with them, um, how do you do that in your, in your life? Like not just your business, but do you also bring it into your everyday life? And, and how would you do that? Um, originally, I started just by implementing a self-care. As I said, I had had health problems. So it was really um, necessity born that I've come across all these um, amazing things. Yeah, so I just um, I just started with a simple roller bottle. Um, my daughters made me a couple of blends and I started using that every day. Wow. And um, so do you use them just for pain-based or do you use them in meditation or mantras um, uh, and like to with the affirmations and stuff as well? Mm -hmm. I don't tend to do a lot of affirmations, um, but I have my own words of power that I share and, and a personal, uh, I guess you'd call an energetic maintenance that I do every day. And sometimes um, the oils will vary. I'll ju I just work intuitively with them now. I've um, gathered quite a range over the last few years. So <laughs> um, depending on what's jumping out at me on different days. Uh, when I first started, I would uh, tend to look up the meanings and, and you know, research. Um, the, the energetic properties of the particular oil. But the more I did that, the more I was finding that it was just exactly what, it was so, so appropriate for what I was needing at that time that I've sort of stopped that practice now. I don't tend to look them up anymore. Every now and again for a bit of a laugh, if I'm a little bit curious, I will. But generally I'll just, I'll just work with them intuitively. Wow. So... Um, right at this moment, I've, I think it's the, with the winter solstice that's going on um, and the energies of that and then about to go into a super um, moon, a nice big giant full moon on Friday night. And there's also a couple of play, uh, planets in retrograde. And I've just noticed with the energies at the moment, a lot of people are... Um, they're not so much depressed. It's more like they're, they're, um, I think the nature of the winter solstice for us in the Southern Hemisphere is to really connect with, well, what's no longer serving us or maybe what patterns um, have I still got playing that I need to let go of? Like what am I sabotaging myself in? Or even sometimes like when we are getting a reoccurring message and we've been ignoring it. So it's kind of like really deep reflective energy. And um, I've had quite a few people who are just so, like I'm reading their comments. They've been reaching out, um, friends, myself, like so many people. And the reoccurring thing is it's almost like you're so much in your mind and your mind is going all around and around and around like a washing machine. And um and then you're like, mm, you can't find your center. And because it's not the world's most pleasant thing that's going around in the washing machine, like you're feeling a little bit lost or uncertain or I'm bashing myself because I haven't been, I haven't I've been ignoring my intuition or, you, you know, and you feel really disconnected. And I was wondering if you've got any recommendations for any oils that kind of bring you peace clarity of mind and can bring you back to center and um and I was just wondering if, if there's something that you could recommend to people who are going through that I used to use um a, a 
blend called Balance. Um, that is a really beautiful nurturing, grounding. It does exactly what it says. It, it will balance things out. But with all the oils, sorry? Is that with doTERRA? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I have used, yeah, I have used that before and I, I still have some there. Um, vanilla and cedarwood, um, a really earthy, rich, really fantastic for um, anxiety or the racing mind. Um, and the, I've been using ylang, -ylang uh the last few days just intuitively, which um, when I did look it up <laughs> was for um, exactly what we need for this time at this time. Um, and I, I guess the really important thing is it doesn't really matter which oil you choose um, it depends whether you have five oils or a hundred oils um, I, it's more going with your intuition when you're choosing it um, and just breathing just making sure that you take that moment to breathe and kind of drop out of your head and back into your body as you're whether you you know put a few drops on your hands and rub them together and just smell them or whether you actually put put the oil onto your body um, topically. Yeah. I um, would never have imagined vanilla and cedar wood, but then I'm like I'm trying to imagine what it would smell like and I'm just like, wow, like even just thinking about it, that's definitely what I'm going to have to add to my combination. Is that yeah, it's really warming. The um, vanilla is amazing even internally for um, any kind of anxiety or um, worry or stress. Um, but the cedar wood, I, I'm, I'm a real fan of the tree essence. They just, um, yeah, speak to a different part of me. I love that smell. Wow. So Efrosini, um I hope I spelt that correct, uh, like pronounced that correctly. She's um, asked, what oils do you use? So um, what are the main ones that you would be using in your life at the moment? Mm -hmm. uh, in my, in the, in the business, in the balms that I've made, um, and all of my products have been made for family members and have accidentally become um, available to everybody else. So <laughs> I, I, I just love that about them. Yeah. Uh, so I use a lot of peppermint and uh, patchouli, lavender, of course. Uh, eucalyptus oil is an amazing, I think, underestimated oil by most people. Um, we tend to use it if we've got a bit of a cold or a chest problem, uh, but it's a really good one to energetically cleanse um, your, your body, your aura, aura space. Just actually um, on another group, and they were talking uh, about um, burning eucalyptus leaves for smudging and with the um, traditional origines. And, yes. And I'm like, oh, of course. And I literally, until this second, have never put together the fact that made the, the connection. <laughs> Same thing. I'm like, oh my god, I don't have to burn the, the burn the leaves. I could literally use that to cleanse the aura. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's profound. I'm going to be using that one because yeah, I've been carrying a little a little bottle of eucalyptus for the last couple of months while I've been traveling, and it just it really helps because you can when you're moving around a lot, you don't necessarily have a lot of control over the space that you're in. Um, and I've just I found it really helpful actually. So I um. I do this little thing which I saw someone do in 2012 when I started meditating and what they do is they put this person put the essential oil on and they rub their hands together and then they were kind of like almost just gently I, I guess stroking or patting their aura and yep. I was just like oh, I want to do that. So I've mimicked them ever since. I just randomly saw someone in a meditation doing that afterwards. And, I, and that's what I do with the, when I want to cleanse with an oil or, or really work with it on an energetic level. So I'm picturing myself getting my eucalyptus and just, because it does, it has that just vibrant zing cleansing and, it, and 
yes, we think cleaning product. Yes, we think detergent. Yes, we think um, for when you've got a common cold. And the duh, it's got used in cleaning products. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like eucalyptus tissues, eucalyptus sprays, eucalyptus such and such. Well, how have I never thought of the fact that if you can cleanse your floor, that you can cleanse your aura with it? Like that's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm deeply amused at myself right now. <laughs> um, so now um, F. Frasini's wrote uh, what brand of oil. Um, so I've... I've used mainly doTERRA, but I do have a couple which if I'm going through um, the shopping centres, sometimes I found like um, a shop full of essential oils and and I think they're more of a wholesaler and mm -hmm. the quality is still, still being good, the 100% and I smell and I just use my intuition. Um, and, and then there's been a couple that I've got um at a health food store um which uh were in larger quantities on one time i was doing something with rose hip and i wanted a larger amount and i was able to find some and it wasn't doTERRA but it was like a good bottle because i was going to use it mm -hmm. to blend with same with jojoba i've used that as a blending one and i buy that in a larger bottle so that's kind of my ones that i use mm -hmm. um uh, oh, Maria's just gone so true. I think she's laughing with me about about the eucalyptus. We've had this like massive epiphany. <laughs> just <laughs> massive awakening of eucalyptus. <laughs> you know, we'll be like running off and just going, did you know? <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Um, so um, what kind of brands do you use? Yeah, so I, I don't have one particular brand. Um, funnily enough, I've um, got one daughter that is Dolterra and the other is Young Living. Um, so I have both <laughs> of those brands. Um, there's a couple of Australian ones that, that they're called Gum Leaf Essentials, I think. I'm not sure if I've got the bottle in my bag, but I've been using some of their blends, um, quite a few of their blends lately, and they seem like really good quality. And I guess it just depends on your budget. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day and just work with your intuition go like you said go into the shopping center and just sort of have a bit of a smell and have a bit of a look and um, and yeah see what you're drawn to yeah and I, I think the other thing to be aware of is um, sometimes the price of blends can be more expensive and you're going oh but it can be really what's in it some um some essential oils you need like tons of the product you, you might need like a cubic meter to, to make an x amount of essential oils whereas in something like rosemary where you've only got a, or lavender you've only got to rub um their leaves and you start to get the oil on your fingers mm -hmm. so they're always going to be cheaper because um, they're oil rich and oil dense in their products and their leaves in the first place. Um, so uh, that kind of leads into another question, Nick. Um, with something that's a plant like that that you've got growing in your garden, um, have you ever kind of made your own essential oils or have you, um, uh, have you infused them and how do you work with them in comparison to buying an, an actual bottle of the stuff? Mm -hmm. So I have, I've made some, um, I make a couple of different tinctures and I used to have quite a good garden and, and I did experiment. So I've made, um, I've made essential oils just, you can, it's literally as easy as getting your base oil. So it might be an olive oil. Um, or as you said, jojoba or rosehip, whatever you want, depending on what you're going to use it for. But you can just get a, a really good quality olive oil and pop your cloves of garlic and pop your rosemary and, and everything into that oil and, and seal it up and, in, and it will infuse over time. Yeah. Yeah, and the oil will take on all of those properties of those plants. Actually, years ago 
when I was doing some of the massage and stuff with you. That's how we first met. Yeah. Uh, I used to do that with my mum and um, a couple of other people. And I would intuitively, we had a huge, we had like a hundred herb plants at one stage with all different stuff. And I used to collect odd things, um, which were, you know, and I was able to get some St. John's wort, you know, on the down low. Mm -hmm. And um, and we had the space to do some of the other different stuff. So I used to go out with my little basket and I would intuitively pick the different things. And um, at that stage, I I was right into aromatherapy and the oils. I had the free, yeah, I had the um, aromatherapy um, Bible thingamajiggy and I would, I would go into all the properties. Um, and then I had other herb books. So I would go out there and I'd go, oh, I'll have a little bit of mugwort and I'll, and I'll have um, some, I think the funniest one, sweet almond oil was the carrier, I think the one that I chose to, to do the blending. And mm -hmm. I, I would put it all in a little jar and I would put it um, in some water and just slowly simmer it. So that would force the oils to come out and infuse. So I yep. would. Uh, you know, I wouldn't boil it. It would just be a, you know, a couple of hours like this, and um, and uh, it would always infuse. And then I'd have to drain it carefully. Mm -hmm. And the oils and stuff and that I gifted to people, I'm like totally forgetting that I did half of this stuff. And I think I need to do some more of it now because I really love yeah, it's it. calling you again. Yeah, and I, I've got like rosemary and lavender going mad out there so I think I might do a little bit of that for myself because mm -hmm. they're two of my favorite ones and um yeah so you can really um you can really connect to your I laughingly call her my inner witch um and but it really is connecting with the power of nature isn't it mm -hmm. Um, so we've got a couple of comments. Carrie's gone, hello, hello, gorgeous Carrie. Um, Maria's gone, the most expensive is sandalwood. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much sandalwood is, but there's a couple that are hideously expensive. I, um, for a for a woman's group and a, and a meditation thing I did many years ago, actually, I think I've still got some. I did... You know um, the three gifts that they brought to Jesus: frankincense, myrrh, um, I, 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 gold. I, yes, I put my gold, <laughs> put my gold rings in the jar to infuse with gold, and um, much to my mum's confusion, and one of one of the it was either frankincense or myrrh was hideously expensive. I paid over a hundred bucks for this bottle so that I could, you know, put it in. And, um, but then I made up a bunch of little things. I actually think I might have some of those somewhere and I have no idea where they would be. I'm going to have to think about that. But um, th like that, to me, I was blown away that anything could be that expensive. Um, mm. But there's a couple that would be, you know, quite, quite up there. Um, Kathy Moody has just wrote, I recently bought a set of oils. How do you use them? I don't have an infuser and have just placed a drop of them on my skin. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to Kathy? Uh, so, uh, depending on the oil, sometimes um, directly on the skin and depending on the person, um, we've got to be a little bit careful about putting them directly on to our body, especially if they're 100% oils. The easiest way if you don't have a diffuser, there's these little bottles, just a little roller bottle, and you can purchase them um, in most craft shops. Um, yeah, and you can just put a few drops of the, the oil that you want to use in there and it's just got a roller and it's nice and easy just to roll on well, as you go or you could use it on, yeah, 
that's that's the main way I use them, putting them on topically. Yeah. And um, so you would suggest some kind of a carrier oil that doesn't have much sense, like smell. So jojoba. Um, uh, so fractionated coconut oil is probably the easiest one. They sell that everywhere these days, and it's just a liquid coconut oil. Yeah, so it can be ingested. What did you call it? Defractionated? Fractionated. Fact fractionated. Yeah. And they just sell it um, in the oil aisle, like with the, with the cooking oils. How oh, cool. Yeah. And, um, and it doesn't smell too coconutty? No, it's got very little um, scent at all. I would have never thought of that because I would have just assumed that coconut oil would be very coconutty and overpower it. So, um, and do you just intuitively put as many drops in the roller bottle as you would like or do you just not do too many or how much do you suggest? Yeah, I, I tend to just play a lot. I um I work intuitively. Whatever number jumps out at me, um, I've not really been formally trained in any of it. I just have um, yeah. just played with it and just yeah, trial and error. Whatever you do works. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we we everyone who's watching, we recently went to a retreat together. It was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Muslim parent and. Um, so we went to a retreat together and um, Nick bought her mi migraine um, roller and um, because there's a lot of energetics going on and um, I had it on the back of my neck and it worked a treat, you know, mm -hmm. didn't, have to, didn't have to take any pills or anything else like that, just that and a little bit of a neck massage and Bob's your uncle. It was just mm -hmm. incredibly powerful. Um, so uh, the other thing I'll say, Kathy, is um, everyone is very, very individual. Um, I am very sensitive to lemon um, and too much rosemary can um, make me uh, kind of almost a little bit itchy if I put too much in the bath. And um, that's another thing that I can suggest is I do a lot of um, uh, baths, which mm. Nicole laughs at me about because um, <laughs> the time when I'm sending her a, I'll be sending her a little voice pop on Facebook and you'll hear me in the bath. With the splash, splash, splash. <laughs> and, I, um, and I have a lot of fire signs in my astrology. Like I think three quarters of my planets are in the fire signs. Um, so I didn't realize that I, all these years, oh, and I've been craving having a bath or going to the ocean or staring at water. Um, I had this one lady who's an astrologer go, you've been intuitively seeking out the thing that's going to balance you the most because I have so much fire. I, the water will keep me energetically and emotionally balanced. So I use personally um, essential oils in the bath probably the most um and I also do um I, I like when I'm working with ritual and stuff like that I'll I'll have a candle which I will set for a specific intent and I like very much like Nick I'll, I'll intuitively just do whatever so, so sometimes it can get a bit odd and I um I like I'll have a green I have all these tiny little candles with the different colors so i want to work with the power of the color so i will sometimes I'll, I'll light the candle and then i will drop some of the wax from the other colors onto the candle and then i'll get some essential oils and i'll squeeze it onto the candle as i'm saying my affirmation and setting the intention for what i want that candle to work on um so that's another way that i use um the essential oils is is in ceremony and ritual. And some people go, they can get a little bit, oh, that's a little bit too pagan for me. I'm not a witch. Um, the thing that I want people to understand about ritual and ceremony is it is the most powerful way to reprogram your brain. 
if you are not, it's not just about manifestation. <clears throat> it's not just about prayer work or visualizations and things like that. Like if, if you have um, a reoccurring pattern, this is how I work with the archetypes. Like say you are wanting to, you've realized that you're martyring yourself a lot and you're always saying yes when you don't want to do it and you know that you don't want to do it but you are almost going into self-punishment by saying yes and then you're like then you focus in on the sacrifice I used to have the worst martyr um and you can actually get that candle you can do the different things sometimes I'll sprinkle herbs um, once the wax is actually at the top is melted so I'll sprinkle the herbs so they're like embedded in that in that top part of the wax sometimes I can carve symbols or write um, in texture um, on the candle I do all different kinds of things to them um, sometimes I will sit the candle on a large crystal or a piece of um, organite um it's something that you build your own little you know don't go into your perfectionist with I must have step one to step 20. I mean me and Nicole laugh about perfectionist because it can be quite destructive but it, when you're when you're creating your own ceremony and ritual it's what make what makes it feel right to you you go from the heart you just go into trust in by being in trust and faith and doing this from, you know, that instinctual level, you're connecting to your divine self, your higher self. You're not connecting into the monkey mind. It's another one of Nicole's, um, story, you know, favorite sayings <laughs> with the, the monkey mind. And um, and you, it's almost like you, you're not only working with the energetics of the plants and stuff, you're, you're tapping into your higher self your, the, and the divine. And you're bypassing the brain, you're bypassing religion, you're bypassing the labels of um, this is pagan or witchy. You're just connecting into the essence of what you're wanting to do. So if you're wanting to work on your martyr, this is what I'm going to create, what I'm going to do every time I... I light this candle and I stare into the flames. I am, I'm reaffirming that I am committed to being in my warrior because I don't want to be a victim anymore. And I'm going to do this work. So um, that's the power of how you can use the essential oils. I, I can have the candle and then I also will use the essential oils to I'll put it on my third eye. And it's not just about, oh, I want to see this and activate my pineal. Quite often it's like a, I'm, I know that my thoughts are keeping me in this loop, clear my mind, you know. Quite often I'll put it on my forehead and I'll say a prayer. And, you know, prayer's not a dirty word. It's not a bad word. It's not a Catholic word. Prayer is how you connect to the divine. Okay. <coughs> sorry tickle in the throat mm -hmm. so when you're working with ritual and ceremony nick um you do i know that you do a little bit of reiki um mm -hmm. on them do you say prayers over them as you're doing it or do you um like uh, on the ceremonial level on the ritual level um, do you work with them a little bit differently as well? When I'm making products or when I'm doing my personal stuff? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, there's, a, there's a bit of a process with the making because obviously I'm infusing and then, um, you know, before I get to the end product. But all the way along, um, the raw products are all infused with Reiki and Seishem. Seishem is, uh, is earth, is earth magic, is earth energy, working with being grounded and working with natural law and the four elements. For my personal practice, what was the question? Um, 
like how do you use essential oils um, mm. in more ceremony and ritual? But also, yeah. do you um, do you pray and um, I know that you use the Reiki and now I know about mm-hmm. the Shoshone, but like is, is there other forms and stuff that you work with the essential oils, I suppose on the energetic level? My, my biggest tool is intention. Mm. I, I have a rock solid intention. Um, when I'm working in that realm, it's always for the highest good, for the highest good of all. Um, and when I'm making medicines for people, it's it's for their highest good, for them um, to be well. <laughs> yeah. And I am, um, and you're so good at it. So tell us a little bit about some of the different products. What are your main ones? Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted to add about the another easy way to add essential oils if we don't have a big luscious bar um (laughs) you can actually make a a really powerful ceremony just with a foot bath and you add in your add in salt add in magnesium add in your oils of choice you know it becomes a bit of a ritual pouring the hot water laying it out somewhere for you to sit and place your feet in it whether you're listening to music or reading a book or, or doing something else that uh, makes you feel good while your feet are in that water and really connecting in with that intention and, yeah, really powerful. That sounds amazing. Mm. I know I have the big luscious bath and I might add the foot one to it too <laughs> and I um. But it, there's something sacred about the feet because not only are they used for grounding, but, um, uh, you know, Jesus anointed the feet in, in, mm-hmm. the, in that practice. And there's also, I mean, with my, when I do energy healings, I was always drawn to the feet first you know and and Mm -hmm. i used to try and logically go oh well i'm gonna activate the earth star chakra and i'm gonna do such and such and i i don't fully know why and i'm not gonna go into trying to understand why but i have something about the feet i just think they're sacred and that will just that would be fantastic because Mm -hmm. you could you could do so much with that especially if you're like ungrounded i just think that would be incredibly powerful to just ground you in and you could throw some like black tourmaline or smoky quartz in there (laughs) add all the things in (laughs) and um, and what was the grounded ones that you said vanilla and what's the other one uh vanilla and um oh cedar wood cedar wood i personally find the 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 tree essence really grounding they're just really earthy rich um energies yeah wow. um so, so that and and the tree essence um is that a different brand than an, no that that's different? any tree so your birch um cedar wood sandalwood I'm just trying to think of all of the trees off the top of my head. Alder, there's all kinds of ones. Um, the so, boab. Yeah. So it's actually, as you're pouring the bath, you're not actually putting the essence in, you're calling upon the tree. Is that what you meant? Well, it depends how far you want to go. You can literally use that essence on uh, as an, on an essential oil level or you can go up one more and go into the energetics and the history and the lineage of that essence so that's what you mean by the tree essence i was going Mm. literal my literal brain was going oh she's made a tree essence (laughs) (laughs) oh maybe that's a prompt (laughs) i um i would buy it And, um, I'm inspired too, actually. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of this little chat. <laughs> um, 
so yeah and and the feet to touch on what you said about the feet on a on a very physical level like you know we understand um that the feet are connected to every other part of the body um through reflexology and um and you know other modalities so a lot of uh you can really benefit from from either that foot bath or actually putting the essential oils into just a little bit of um, sorbeline and then just rubbing it on your feet or a little bit of oil. It can be just even coconut oil, um, olive oil. It doesn't have to be a particular oil. Um, and, yeah, a couple of drops in and rub that on your feet and it, it will disperse through the body where it needs to go. Wow, perfect. And there's all those things where you put those things on the bottom of your feet and draw all the toxins out of the bottom of your feet. And then there's those bar things that you can pay for those stuff. So it just makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. and I um, You've got so many practical ideas. No wonder you think it's like practical magic. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah, I should have brought some products to show, but... um. I make a balm. It's called Nan's Magic Balm, and it's used topically. I do advise clients to use it on their feet for pain. Um, I've had a few ladies that have really benefited from um, it just being applied to the feet, and it'll just relax the whole body, and they're finding that they sleep better. Um, and, of course, you know, sore knees, joint pain, arthritis, um, all of those sorts of things. My mum's got Nana's magic balm. Nana's magic balm. It's amazing. And it's it's fascinating the story behind that one because you just started it to was it to help your own pain or was it your daughter? It was my mum, the it? Nan, because she's Nan. Yeah. So yeah. Nan's magic balm. Um originally made just for mum. Wow, I love that. It started out helping mum and then all these people. And, mm -hmm. and it's very much word of mouth, isn't it? Like once that, you know, yeah. they tell somebody else and stuff like that. That's She's got a lot of arthritis in her, um, in all of her body, but one, her foot in particular was really troubling her. And uh, she tried uh, lots of different things and a few different prescriptions. But the, my main concern is that she wasn't sleeping through the night. It was actually waking her up in the middle of the night with pain and she was not able to get back to sleep. And I just... Um, you know, there's something really soothing about a full night's sleep. So I set about making um, something that she could put on before bed, physically onto the joint and um, and get some relief. And, yeah, it worked really well. Fantastic. And what else do you make? So I make a, a, a roller like so. just a little roll a, a topical pain roll it's called goddess pain be gone that's and pain be gone yeah that's the one we were playing with on the weekend as well so um that one's just to rub topically onto any pain site really um and pain be gone i love that i love that and how did that one start for yourself or for another family member um that one was, I think, for me. No, that one might have been for mum as well. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. I've had a couple of different versions, um, yeah. but I use that's the one I mainly use myself. I use a lot when I'm driving. Um, oh yeah. Gosh, it's amazing. It is just amazing. And um, so is there any other products? Yeah, so the, the very first product I ever made was um, a tincture. And it's called Be Well Tincture, and that is the one that I made originally for my daughter. Um, and I've currently got about, I would say, 25 women taking it regularly. Yeah. And it works. Um, it improves sleep. It's a general. It's a general well-being tincture. So, um, relaxation, anxiety, stress. Uh, sleep all the things that a lot of women have yeah you know i mean i talk to you all the time about the, the um 
shapeshifter and the martyr and the prostitute and how much we give, give, give. And, um, you know, and the perfectionist can cause anxiety mm -hmm. and all those different kinds of things. So um, we place so much pressure upon ourselves mm -hmm. and to be able to have a good sleep and calm, you know, that's potent. That's potent. Um, and that reminds me beautifully too. That's that's the other reason I started working with the essential oils is really just to give back to myself. Um, I don't think there's too many of us that aren't busy these days that don't have, you know, more than enough things to do. Um, and to be able to just take small pockets of time over the day and really give back to yourself and connect in with these amazing plant essence um, is so much more powerful than we give it credit for. Exactly. Mm. You're tapping into the energies of something greater than yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And when, when I say about prayer, you don't have to just pray to um, God, Goddess. You can pray to a plant, you know, help me. Mm -hmm. Come on, go. <laughs> I, have a, I have a very amusing way of um, how I pray and, and it's just, um, oh, guys. I really, really need some help. I just do little mini soul prayers. I do other prayers. But I'm like, oh, come on, guys. And you know what? After I say those little soul prayers, I'll hop onto Facebook or someone will message me and they'll give me the answer to what's, like, been causing me the problem, you know? And um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times the, the universe and God and Goddess has spoke to me through Facebook. It, I'll ask a question and I get on and there is like legit four different people saying the exact same thing in a slightly different way. And I'm just like, well, wow, you can't get any clear. <laughs> There's my <laughs> answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I um, And that's it. You just we just have to ask, don't we? But I also um I have such um hang ups about prayer. To me it was like this burden and this big thing and it's a Catholic thing and it's a you know, I had a I had a fairly um, cult like church that I grew up in, very small. Mm. Um, and it took me eighteen months to unprogram all the stuff that was programmed into me. And mm. we are supposed to have this intimate connection with our higher selves and with God. And you know, and it's not supposed to be a middleman that's dictating to us how we are going to interpret sacred texts how mm. we're going to interpret messages and um I think yeah it's a very individual thing isn't it yeah. I used to always say to my kids um it didn't matter who they prayed to as long as they did it as long as they believed in something you know because it is very a very personal thing it's a very individual thing and what works for one family member will not necessarily work for another family member. And that's so powerful mm. to be able to pass that to your children. And, um, I mean, shamans, when they're doing their work, they're, they're working with the plant kingdom and they're doing the, you know, um, pagans, no matter what, if you're a druid or a witch or a, a wizard or um, no matter what you, you're doing, you're still working with that kingdom, you know, and you're praying and, and invoking and, and calling upon it. And I think the biggest thing, I think, as you were saying, in those moments when you can smell and connect in with the essence of these trees and the essence of, and the magic of it is we're not supposed to do this ourselves. We are never alone. You know, if we feel like we have to do it ourselves, then um, it's just going to almost bring this grief of disconnection up that you have to, mm -hmm. to heal, you know. And yeah. we are so supported. And um, so, yeah, I really loved what you just said. It's time for us to um, bring this to a close. Yeah. Um, Nick's going to join me next Wednesday. I'm doing another um, couple of Wednesdays for Leonie. Mm -hmm. And um, we will um, 
you're talking about essential oils and talking about the plant kingdom and um, a few more things, uh, I've put a link to both of our groups. Mm -hmm. If you would like to talk to Nick um, about um, any of her products, if you know anyone in your family that's suffering from um, uh, arthritis and pain or needing a little bit of like de-stressing and stuff like that, then reach out to her. Um, and if you also would like to, um, I'll buy Kerry Gorgeous. If, if any of us want us to talk about a specific subject or um, anything mm. that is in the healing and the plant realms, then um, don't hesitate to reach out and we can talk about that next Wednesday. So it's been so lovely having you with us. Um, and thank you so much, Nicole. And thank you, um, Telstra, for the connection for both of Amazing us. connection. <laughs> I know. You're crystal clear. Audio is good. <laughs> Visual is good. I'm just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and it, it really has been such, um, I feel like I'm just on the phone chatting with you. I forget that there's other people um, watching. It's been really really awesome to to connect with you and talk about practical magic talk about plants yes I feel yeah. sometimes I think we could talk all day thank you so much for having me it's been wonderful it was absolute joy so thanks to everybody who um participated anyone watching the replay mm -hmm. don't forget the simplest little things that we can sometimes dismiss can be the most powerful and take those little moments, like Nicole said, mm. and just a couple times a day connect in with it, you know, and, and ask for help if you're going through stress or anxiety and you, and you work with a pick a specific oil, breathe it in and, and take that moment. And, and, you, and as Nick said, give yourself that moment. And then you'll probably see a lot of magic unfolding if you give yourself those moments. Mm -hmm. All righty. Much love to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Okay. So. <clears throat>